What is going on my peeps, man? Versatile is back with another video. Back here to talk about a lens I've been trying to get for a while, you know what I'm saying? And that is the Sony full frame 35 F1.8. This beautiful mini monster right here, as you guys see immediately, some of the aesthetics that we get on this is a AM and FM switch or manual focus versus autofocus. And it's been a joy to use and I've only used it a few times and we're gonna get into why i like this so much and why i prefer to use this for video over photos but before we get into all that if you guys haven't already make sure you guys ignite the like button subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos and we can sit back chillax and see what's cracking and let me know down in the comment section below have you used the sony full frame 35 f18 have you used the sony 35 f14 g master let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about that 35 millimeter focal length and without further ado let's get into the video now one of the things i immediately noticed when i took this out of the beautiful orange box that you get which is over there is that i think that's the lens a glass element or the motor that moves inside when you kind of rock it so let me know if you guys also experienced that with your 35 if not it could have been because my amazon driver was not friendly with my 35 f18 package and just threw it now that being said i have not noticed any problems since using it i took this on a sh on a project i was shooting uh for a non-profit and i i understand why people like the 35 millimeter focal length because it works in just about every situ situation so i also incorporated the polar pros you know peter mckinnon variable nd promise uh, promise filter two to five stop along with that shoot because we were in and outdoors and so i just left it on and was able to still get great light when you know increasing my iso or when we went outside in the very harsh sun with some games that were being played i of course used the two to five stop and it worked just fine and the quality that you get with this and how fast or smooth the focus is and i I like to call it focus fall off. I might be making up words, but essentially how the focus just rolls off of subjects as it moves to other subjects. Now, granted, I do have my autofocus to be a little bit more faster or responsive in terms of doing that, but it still looks really smooth when it's transitioning focus. And I like that with this lens. I also like the fact that it's usable in most, situ again, in those two situations, because of the F1.8, if I had to really stop all the way down to F1.8, I could, and I didn't have any issues. I still could maintain a lot in, in you know, focus or in, in, in sharpness, despite using the mist filter on there. And that simply is due to the fact that the range you get in terms of, you know, I guess it's not, it's not as compressive, of course, as what I'm used to with my 85. So more stuff is just generally going to be in focus because you have so much more to play with at that 35 millimeter focal length. And then if you have to get close to subjects, you can get really close with the 35 with this lens in particular and get really clean shots or images. And that's what I like about this lens for video in particular. Now, in terms of photos, I've taken a few photos with it. I haven't done my 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 usual as I've done with my other lenses. I really like to experiment this with, with, with my lenses with video to see will it work with my with my feng shui, so to speak. Now, photos I have taken, I have noticed that it does vignette a little bit more on the sides, but it's uh, and I think I, I don't know why it does that with this lens because it's not even considered a you know a, an ultra wide for that matter and barely considered a wide angle lens so for it to, to vignette 
like that and to get some of that purple fringing or chromatic aberration um especially towards the edge of the frame is it's, it's a little bit noticeable but again when you're looking at the edge of the frame if you really had to depending on how wide you shot your shot most likely you didn't compose the image for the frame uh, or for the edge so you could crop in a little bit or make sure you make uh, if you especially if you're using Lightroom to adjust your photos and everything make sure you allow it to do that optic adjustment um, so that way it can you know fix that for you uh, those those small distortions and if you had to crop in a little bit or you it's really not that much noticeable and sometimes those imperfections with these lenses kind of add to the photo or the image especially vignetting because not to say that you know pictures don't need vignetting pictures if you do add vignetting it kind of helps the eye focus on what you want it to and of course playing around with the vignette scene uh settings within lightroom which is what i use to edit my photos you can really tailor the vignette to what you want anyway so you know in regards to photos with the 35 that's what i've noticed with it but it hasn't gotten away from me shooting the images are still good they're very usable and in, in this day and age when most of us are using photos for social media you're probably not going to notice half of what i just said anyway you're going to see a very clean very solid beautiful image that you get out of the 35 1.8 now one of the other things I did notice, and I don't know if I would have noticed it more of my 85 or not, but I was in a specific, I was like in a cafeteria at this, cause we were shooting for a school. I was in a cafeteria and I noticed that the lights, or I started noticing a lot of flickering with this lens. And I thought, okay, maybe there is something wrong with this lens then. But when I moved out of that certain area, it was no longer flickering. So I don't know if it was a type of I don't want to say incandescent, but fluorescent lighting that they were using in their cafeteria. I don't know if that light was actually distorting the image that I was trying to shoot, but I didn't notice it in any other situation. So that gave me call that, that at first it gave me cause of pause, but then it gave me a, a, a sigh of relief to know that my lens is not damaged. Now, <clears throat> will I still maybe reach out and see if I can just get this lens replaced? Maybe just to see if I don't know if you can hear that, but that's what it sounds like. But once it's on the camera and you lock it in and you cut it on, then everything stops. So it must be just because it's not activated. So the element moves inside. Now, shout out to Gerald Undone. He convinced me essentially not to worry about the 35G Master quite yet because the very thing that I want to use this for, which is video, this 1.8 is better than the G Master, the 1.4. So image quality wise for photos, the G Master is way better or significantly better than the 3518. But in terms of focus, now I use autofocus, I don't pull focus. So using the G Master for video would be a little bit more harder because it focus breathes, unlike the 3518. This has no problems with focus breathing or focus hunting for that matter. This does a very good job of locking in or if it needs to focus, it will and it, and it focuses no problem. The G Master, however, has some focus breathing issues. So I won't say issues, it just focus breathes more than this. And so for video, I'm like, oh, no problem. I'm getting the 1.8 and I get to save, what, <laughs> what $800, $800, $800, 750 somewhere in there. Cause this lens is running for 650 right now. It's actually, it's only actually discounted hundred dollars. So this is at 650. If you guys are interested, links will be down in the description below. But that is something to keep in mind when uh <laughs> going for the 35 millimeter in sony's world of course they have APS-C versions of the lenses i haven't tried none of those i've just tried the full frame 3518 i love it and i trust joe undone's opinion so him referencing the two um as being uh the, the g master better for photos the 18 be being better for video and he uses the 3518 for his videos gave me all the confidence in the world to grab this try it out on site for a job you know for a project and then be uh, uh uh be pleased with it so i can recommend it again links will be in the description below let me know down in the comment section below if you guys enjoy the 35 millimeter focal length i know sigma has a good one as well and sony's uh zeiss version i believe is pretty good i think it's a f2 i think don't hold me to it but that one's good i know it's a little bit bigger or beefier as they would say 
Um, and then, yeah, let me stop rambling. Again, as always, you guys haven't already, make sure you guys are like the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that way you never miss my videos. Then we can sit back, chill out, see what's cracking. But your man, Verse, for signing out until the next video. Goodness gracious. Wait for.